Hi there and welcome back. Uh, today uh, I thought I'd show you how I'm gonna make some uh, modular robes for my miniature games. And uh, this was just something I came up with that I think is a simple but easy solution that will, I hope, look really nice. Uh, and yet be really easy to store. So what I've started with is these album covers. I just happened to have bought a ton of albums because of the papers inside of them and uh, they were super cheap in a store here in Sweden. So I have a ton of them but any pretty heavy uh, shipboard would do for this. And just let's see this is about a three mil plate and it has some like paper fabric on top and some paper backing which is super simple uh, I have made uh, a couple of different types of roads or what is gonna become roads I have these straight ones which is the one I'm gonna show you how I have made uh, and this is just the base of them when I have cut them and sanded them. I have, uh, uh, let's see, this is how it looks before when it's just cut and before it's sanded. I have a Y shape, an X shape. Uh, I have a couple of different curves. I have these that is are a sloping curve and I have these that are bigger curves and as you can see these ones are made um, from the same part of um, shipboard and I just cut them and sanded them so I got four curves out of this and I think I might have gotten a piece here as well then I have this curve that is the inside of this and I could show you these are the insides of this so I'm trying to use up all the pieces these ones come from one of these uh, pieces so and this is like an proper L-shaped curve. So I'm just gonna show you how I do this easily. I need to take off my I don't want to cut into my protective mats. I have decided that my roads are gonna be six centimeters. Uh, which is about two inches uh, wide. They are also going to be cobblestone mud mix. Uh, is my plan. That might change if it doesn't work out the way I want to. Here you see, since I've already cut a part of it off, if I would have started from this edge, I would have measured about half a centimeter. So if my road is six centimeters, I would have measured from a half a centimeter in so I can get some curve on it. So it's not super straight because that's not why I want. But on this side, I already have it cut. The tools I use for this is a metal ruler, a ordinary uh, click pencil. A roller cutter and two different kinds of rape blade knives and depending on what I am cutting I'm using different different ones for the straight lines the roller blade is easiest and I usually just get started pressing it down and then I just wiggle it a bit And just try keeping it in the lines it doesn't always go there but I try and the deeper it cut you cut 
the easier it gets. So I just go back and forth. until I've cut through it, like so. And you see, it's pretty easy, pretty quick. This gives me this, which is an uneven shape. But here we have one that I've already sanded. It will butt up and be the same width. So on the ends, they're always six centimeters. That's how I'm gonna make a modular. And I don't mind that there will probably be a bit of a gap like because on these edges they're a little bit rounded doesn't bother me uh, I'm not that crucial that it's it should like fit in I could I was thinking about making like an uh, jigsaw puzzle piece to make them slot into each other I'm not gonna be bothered but it's an absolute possibility if you want them to be super jigsaw it together. I would make a template uh, and just always decide what's up and down and always cut one side in and one side out like this is the hole and this is the peg. So I could make it modular that way. So when I've done this and I, I do this after I have done a few, depends on what I'm doing otherwise watching TV or something then I just have this sanding block and a pretty rough uh, grid sanding paper if you can see that P120 ordinary wood sanding paper so I just then I just go in and I sand down the hard edges and this is messy I can tell you that straight away so I get something that goes from this to this some I sand a little bit harder some I sand a little bit easier and if I have stuff like this I just go like this. Also the same on the back side. If I feel that there's edges sticking up, I just go like that to get them cut down. So okay, I'm gonna finish all my pieces and sand them down and then I'll be back. Hi <clears throat> and welcome back or welcome again. It's been a couple of days since I filmed the last part of this video. And I have sanded down and I have also base painted all my pieces with black gesso. And I made my black gesso myself, but you can just use bought black gesso. And if you want to make your own black gesso, mine was made with uh, medium mixed with uh, marble powder uh, and some PVA glue and black acrylic paint. Works fine, and this I did because now this has a tooth. Uh, it won't. We have um, what you call it felt uh, covered play table uh, that we put on top of our big table that we're sitting at, and this will help it from sliding. Also, it will help it from warping while I put uh, other things on it. But as you can see, these I think will match up nicely. Uh, when putting them down on the table so that's fun so that's what I've done so far and I actually saw when I was painting that I missed one sanding it down and I just left it that way sanding these down was messy there was paper dust everywhere so I just left that last one because I cleaned everything up so now I'm going to do the stone textures for these and for that I'm going to use caulking. Uh, this is a latex paintable, this is a acrylic uh, paintable uh, uh, caulking and this is almost up, that's why I have this one up. 
I also made myself a stencil. So this is a stencil I made myself using a soldering iron, a 15 watt soldering iron. Let's see if this hasn't dried out yet. I don't think so. And this will probably uh, make, using this stencil, will probably make this uh, the stones look sharp edged. We'll see how it looks. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do about that. So I'm gonna use some black acrylic paint and mix it up with my caulking, which helps me with not having to paint this so many times. You can see this. And I'm just using a palette knife. And I do stencils myself a lot of the time since I I do mixed media, uh, which makes it really simple or fun and cheap. Uh, I made tons of stencils actually and I this one is a divider from a book so it's a little bit heavier plastic which I wanted for this purpose but otherwise I just use plastic file folders that are not the super flimsy kind for my uh, stencils so okay I've got this blended out and I don't care that it's a little bit marbled it will just help uh, with what I'm looking for for this purpose but I think I might actually get a smaller pot knife stick this in water so okay so I have my roads or bases for my roads and they are sanded from one side so that's my top. So I'm just gonna go in with my palette knife and my caulking. And, and you wanna be pretty firm but also, uh, you don't want to move your stencil. This is a big thing. Uh, I don't mind that it's bled a bit, but I don't want it to be moving around. See if I can show you. The texture is got, it's not super high, you see, but it will show up. And I'm also going to go in, let's just shake so there's not so much bleed through. I always have baby wipes on hand when I'm working with stuff like this. And this is a pretty easy cleanup. I just wipe it off the worst of it and then I soak it in water with soap in it. So then I go in and just make sure to push my stencil down and then I ma just make thicker layers if I want it to be more obvious. As you can see the difference in height and if you make a mistake, this is really easy to just scrape off. Uh, and I'm going to do more to this. But what you can see here is that the stones have kind of a straight up texture. Which is what I was thinking I would fix by just waiting about half an hour or so. So it gets a skin on it. And then going in with some cling film on top and just push push the edges down a bit. 
So before it's cured fully, fix it up that way. So I'm just going to continue doing all this. Uh, and just doing this to all my roads. I have a um, uh, spare bed here in my craft room that I have covered up with uh, paper sheeting, like old newspapers and stuff. And you see, I don't care that there's spots that are not stoned, because I'm going to do some other things to this so it doesn't look like a newly made or newly paved road, because that's not what I'm after. Um, but I've covered my bed off, so I won't stain the sheets and stuff. So I'm just going to put it down and let it dry for a while, while I continue with the rest. So I'll be back when it's been about half an hour or so. See you in a bit. Sorry. Bye. So I'm back and I've made cobblestones with caulking, with uh, black paint in it, on all my road pieces. And I just thought I'd show you how many I made uh, of the road pieces. This is all of them, uh, which is plenty enough for what I intend to use them for, since they're supposed to be modular. Sorry about that. I accidentally pushed the off button while I was setting it up. So now, it's been, it took me about 45 minutes to do all of these. I had to clean up my stencil in between because it was getting clogged up. Uh, it is kind of messy, so that could be good to know if you don't like a mess. You could also use stencils like that for uh, stippling on paint and stuff with like a makeup sponge or something. If you want to do it that way, which you work fine. But now you can see the shine is gone. They're not dry, but the shine is gone from the caulking. And now I'm just going in with a uh, cling wrap. And what I'm doing is just pushing gently, like stroking the, the model, modeling paste, the, the raised bits so that they stop being spiky and become more flat, rounded. Since it hasn't dried underneath, this should work. Unless they're not dry enough, then they become spiky again. You can use your hands too uh, and just um, make sure you have them clean between if you get them dirty. Uh, to do this, especially if you're noticing that they're not dry enough for that technique. And I'm not super, because I'm going to do more stuff around this, but now you can see, and they're, they do shrink a bit, so they're not as like high as when you start off. And like I said, this has been 45 minutes. So that's uh, pretty quick. Let's see this one. This one, I did not put a thick coat off anywhere on this. So this should be really simple. Just stroking it down. more or less getting rid of the harsh edges on it. Let me show you. Uh, here you can see it's edged. So I'm just gonna take my finger, squish them. Can you see the difference? Uh, here you can see the harsh edges, and on the other side, here, you see them softer. And like I said, this won't be 
super noticeable so I'm not gonna go like oh every stone has to be super nice then I would have chosen some other way to do this but this is good enough for me I just don't want like spiky super spiky stones all over uh, and if you have uh, which I use quite a lot as you can see this one has not dried at all you can see all the shine in it if you're in a hurry I have this scrapbooking heat gun which help with the drying process quite a bit. You see no shiny left. The thick parts will still be gunky underneath. So you gotta still be a bit careful. I see here. Here I have to be gentler with my smooshing. get because it's gonna stick to if I have caulking on my finger it's gonna stick to the caulking and you saw this one was quite spiky or like straight edges on the stones and some stones will have straight edges also so that's not a big thing But there you go simple simple so now I'm gonna let these dry completely uh, probably won't get to them again until tomorrow but if you just want something really simple this is a super simple way to do it you can even do I'm gonna paint this again this the w things I'm doing like putting paint in the caulking and the coat, base coating was plainly to get more uh, grip for the rest of the things I'm going to do for it. And also, I did the black one because when I paint this again, if there are spots of paint not uh, or spots where paint are not covering completely, it won't matter. Which is why I'm just adding a little bit of an extra step. It just makes the end process easier. But here you go, uh, so far. So this would work really well, just for as as a simple road. Uh, maybe put some uh, uh, some sand in your gesso for extra texture. But otherwise, this is a pretty cool road. Uh, but I'm gonna take it further. So I'll be back with the next step. Bye. <laughs>